Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who don't know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. So with this channel, I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. So if anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 for a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategy called compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each trade average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, we're going to look at MMTLP and DJT. There has been a new letter to the Attorney General with allegations of collusion and also allegations of breaches in federal law and breaches in Florida law. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to be looking at uh, Tixamal NVAX, where there has been two huge catalysts. So stay tuned for that. And before we get started, let's have a look at what's happening in the market. So uh, first headline here from Market Watch, we can see that the stock market today in terms of the Dow Jones, it is rising slightly as the, as the US is uh, market is heading for weekly gains and possibly the best week since December so overall much much better week so let's now have a look at um, from a uh, point of view of Apple good news here Apple is to use its own chips in the cloud uh, to power AI features in 2024 so hopefully uh, good news for Apple stock which has been showing significant recovery and uh, in the previous video we looked at Tixamal HUMA with significant connections to the Ukraine uh, so go ahead and check previous video out for HUMA so uh, shout out now to Quiver Quantitative who again tagging in Tommy Tuberville who was also featured in the previous video and it states here he has disclosed the new purchase of uh, HUMA and again as a reminder this is a small biotech company that makes implantable human tissues they have been testing their tech in uh, Ukraine for combat injuries and uh, coincidentally to Tuberville sits on the armed services committee so he is uh, since his investment the stock has gone up 67 percent and I believe it is still rising so congratulations on Tommy for an outstanding trade there uh, and uh, let's now move on to have a look at uh, this letter. So shout out here to Kristen who's posted with regard to this letter and she states here that the Florida State Attorney General has been asked to investigate illegal short selling. So uh, tagging in Devin Nunes who is the author of this letter, he states here calling out Citadel Securities, Virtue Americas, G1 Execution Services and also Jane Street Capital. So for, with regard to uh, the letter, an important quotation here is that the data made available to to us indicates that for just four market participants have responsible have been responsible for 60% of the extraordinary volume of DJT share. So let's have a look at the letter. So the key highlighted points here for this letter addressed to the attorney general in the state of florida dated may the 9th 2024 uh, what devin has stated here is that first of all he's writing regarding the apparent manipulate uh, manipulation of tick symbol djt uh, which is also known as trump media and technology group so he states here that it, the stock has appeared continuously since april the 2nd 2024 on the threshold list uh, with results from persistent failure to delivers. So uh, that includes an illegal naked short selling of a security and the fail to delivers exceeded 1.1 million shares in DJT alone on April the 9th, 2024. So that is a staggering figure. Uh, and uh, obviously we, we just looked at the um, statement with regard to the four market participants and it also further down, it goes on to say that uh, DJT has consistently been the most expensive, uh, amongst the most expensive expensive stocks to borrow legally and again if the laws are followed however what the allegation here is that some sellers have been paying a, have been paying drastically reduced rates to obtain so-called locates for seemingly illegitimate naked short sales so certainly uh, strong allegations of underhand dealings here and uh, this is the key allegation in terms of uh, for the state uh, for the attorney general and that is collusion such collusion would violate not only federal law but Florida law. So, uh, and then obviously it states uh, as such, uh, Devin is respectfully requesting that the Attorney General take act any action necessary to determine the nature and extent of any illicit activities. Uh, and he would encourage him to look at documents and testimony that from firms that facilitate short sales, including the, uh, the, the organizations highlighted below and at the bottom, uh, what Devin also states is for, for example, first of all, he states that in order for free market 
markets to function as intended. Main Street investors, i.e. retail investors, entrepreneurs, they, we must have confidence that we're on a level playing field. We take a 100% loss of our risk and short sellers take infinite loss. So that is a level playing field because those are the rules of investing with regard to short sales. Uh, however, obviously they have sophisticated and well-connected insiders and that is a problem in terms of it not being a, a level playing field. He goes on to say he believes that market manipulation in modern is modern day racketeering, so could not agree more with that. And market participants who facilitate take trades based on false volume false prices have engaged in fraudulent transactions so very strong parallel with mmtlp very similar allegations to mmtlp uh, and he states here he's ready to assist any efforts where in any way possible and he, again he re he's reminding the attorney general here with regard to the letter sent to congress which included uh, obviously uh, sharing information about the, co the the mmtlp congress letter and making reference to that and uh, he states also to the nasdaq chair uh, ceo officer at uh, adina friedman so let's uh, finish off by having a look at a reaction here from Mark, who's posted tagging in MMTLP. The holders requested the same and nothing was done. However, now, since this is DJT with the obviously linked to Trump media, is a higher chance uh, of an investigation and to get to the bottom of what is going on. And uh, he state Mark is also stating that he plans on providing the Attorney General's office with his complaint against a Florida broker for a similar activity. And uh, once that is filed, we should have a development and update on that. So uh, I certainly think um, things are getting a lot more heated now. And uh, it's, it's a case of uh, waiting to see what happens with regard to the Attorney General in this case. Let's have a look at tick symbol NVAX, also known as Novavax. This is a stock that was called in the pre-market earlier today, uh, exclusively with the Discord members uh, in the Stock Alerts channel, amongst a number of other stocks, including SOUN, which had some great news, and also GETR. Uh, so the news we shared with regard to NVAX, you can see here in the biotech channel in the Discord, there was news of a deal with uh, Sanofi for co-commercialization of COVID-19 vaccine, and De uh, develop novel medication so we'll come to that shortly but let's have a look at the chart for today so congratulations to everybody who got in nvax we can see here uh, today it was up close to 98.66 percent closing at eight dollars and 88 and also in the in the post market up in excess of nine dollars so uh, first of all the key headline here that we can see for, from cnbc is that the share price was uh, spiking at approximately 100% on this deal to commercialize COVID vaccine and look at developing combination shots. So it has signed a multi-billion dollar deal with the French drug maker Sanofi to co-commercialize the company's COVID vaccine starting next year. So this is huge, huge news. Uh, and in terms of this licensing agreement, it's going to allow Novavax to lift its going concern warning, which was first issued in January 2023, to having substantial doubt about its ability to continue uh, continue its operation so great news here for Novavax in terms of the other catalyst what we can see on the investor relations page that the company have also on May the 10th 2024 reported the first quarter 2024 financial results and operational highlights so let's see what we can pick up here and obviously we can the first bullet point is announcing confirmation of this license agreement that we've just seen but in addition to that they're breaking down in terms of the potential multi-billion dollar revenue opportunity for Novavax and that includes a 500 million dollar up from payment 70 million equity investment in novavax 700 million dollars in covid19 and combination product near-term milestones uh, and then also 200 million dollars in milestone plus royalties so the other key thing here in terms of revenue uh, we can see that total revenue uh, in tw the first quarter was approximately 94 million dollars so the company is obviously uh, strong it is generating revenue unlike many many biotech companies in terms of liabilities this is a positive uh, point here they have reduced current liabilities by an additional 831 million dollars in uh, the first quarter of 2024 so uh, great news here so if we have a look at um, uh, the headline with regard to this agreement on the investor relations page in terms of the agreement here may the 10 2024 we can see here that it's going to provide individuals with broader access to a protein-based non-mrna uh, adjuvenated covid19 vaccine through combined commercial strength from 2025 onwards so uh, it, the the agreement is going to provide the company with 
with cash and equity investment totaling approximately $1.2 billion. And we're looking at an upfront payment here that we've just seen at $500 million. So great news here. And it also accelerates potential for development of um, a COVID-19 influenza combination product. So a uh, great example of innovation there. And uh, in the final part, in terms of the license and agreement uh, at the bottom there, we, in terms of Sanofi, Sanofi will take a minority, less than 5% equity investment in Novavax. So again, positive benefits there for Sanofi as well. But let's finish off by having a look at a summary in terms of what kind of company Novavax is. So it trades under NVAX, I was just seen. Uh, so in terms of the company, it's looking to promote health by discovering and developing commercializing innovative vaccines to protect, pre uh, protect against infection diseases so the company is based in um, uh, Galtersburg MD United States and it offers a um, differentiated vaccine platform that combines uh, recombinant protein approach uh, obviously they're, they're focusing also on COVID-19 and uh, they also have um, uh, a study in the University of Oxford with, with regards to Serum Institute in India's R21 matrix so a number of other catalysts up there in the pipeline so overall great news here for NBAX if you would like to get live breaking news and also information in our daily stock alerts as well as breaking news such as uh, what we've seen for Novavax in our biotech channel details are in description below thank you very much for watching please stay tuned